Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hey, Crafty Family and fellow Poodles. Good afternoon. Um, I am going to show you today how to make these cute little earrings. They are um, little like uh, dragonfly wings or butterfly wing earrings. I'm going to show you how to make the with uh, UV resin. It's quite easy. Um, and they're a lot of fun to make and they're really pretty and sparkly and they're see-through um, and they're they're just really really pretty and these are rainbow like a rainbow color with glitter so I'm gonna show you how to make these I have also made these here earrings um, like a feather and I've made um, these cute little <laughs> masks Seems fitting for the times, right? Why not? Might as well have fun with it a little bit. I've also made these little mandala earrings. So you can make a lot of different types with this. And what you'll need is, so uh, these are the wings that I used. I used the longer ones that are up here. This is a transparency film. Um, you can buy them for laser jet or ink jet. And either will work for this. So if you don't have a laser printer, you can buy the inkjet transparency films that you can use in your inkjet computer, I mean printer. Or you can, if you have a laser color laser printer, then you can get the ones for a laser printer and print them off, which is what I did. I used a laser printer. So the person who I learned this from or saw do this, her name is Thinking Outside of the Box. That's her YouTube channel. I'll put the link to her channel below. I'm also going to put a link to where I got these off of Etsy. Um, but you can use other images too. It doesn't have to be these. Like a lot of these I just found online. Like for the feathers, you know, I found the, you know, these online. You can do all kinds of things. Um, but the, she has the lady that sells these. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll put the link in the description. Uh, she has all kinds of butterflies and really pretty stuff. I have other butterflies too that I downloaded off the internet. So I've got all these butterflies as well. So it's kind of like, just depends on what you're looking for. You can get other things. I also have these, which I got off the internet as well. So, you know, it's kind of up to you. But I'm going to show you how to make these. So what you'll need is your inkjet transparency with your wings printed on it. You'll need a UV lamp or a nail, you know, it's uh, for your, it would be for like gel nails. Make sure that it's a 36 watt or higher um, because it'll lessen the time it takes to cure, which isn't very long anyway. You'll need a tile that'll fit inside or you can use a piece of chipboard as long as you're okay with it. You know, the tape will end up pulling up parts of it, I guess, but th that's okay. Um, or a tile that fits in there is good. And you're gonna wanna put tape upside down so you got sticky side here. And that's pretty easy to do. Um, you just flip some pieces upside down then tape them down with, you know, right side, you know, this is like not the sticky side here, but it's taped down all the edges of it. Um, and it'll, it'll last for a while so you can keep using it time and time again for a little while till it starts to not be that sticky. You'll also need some sort of tile or chipboard, um, tile prefer preferably for the first like stage of what we're doing. Um, and then you will of course need your resin. So this is the typical UV resin. It's the clear hard type resin. Um, and we're gonna use this, but we're also gonna mix in for the initial 
bit of resin. This is the only time we're going to use this is the very beginning. This is soft resin. So there's hard resin, there's soft resin. The difference is, well, one is hard and one is soft. So if you resin something just with this, it'll be very pliable like this, you know. If you do something with just the hard resin, it'll be solid, you know, it'll be more solid and rigid. But if you mix the two together, you can get a varying kind of degree of softness. So you can get a little flexibility if you add some soft with your hard resin. And so that can be beneficial, especially in this first step. Because what we're basically doing is my, my uh, laser printer, it put... Um, you notice how like the, the, the transparency is shiny and the wings are kind of matte-ish in this right here. That's because that's the ink side. That's the side with the ink. Whereas on this side, it's, you see the, it's glossy everywhere. The light is reflecting everywhere. Whereas on here, the right, the light isn't really reflecting off the wings. It's just reflecting off the background of the plastic. So that's the ink. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer that ink onto the resin. And so we'll leave behind the transparency when we're done. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut out your wings, leaving plenty of space to put, um, which means I'm going to compromise these two little wings right here, these two little wings so that I can have some room to cut out um, and to properly have space because you want to have enough space around your wings or whatever you're doing so that you can tape them down properly especially for this first part so in other words you want to make sure the ink is up so that matte side where the wings are going to be matte you want that facing upward you're going to put this on your tile and then you're going to tape all the way around it because you want to make sure that it is securely down onto your tile so you're just going to take tape and since we're only doing these two bigger wings we don't have to worry about whether the tape is on top of the smaller wings because those are just those are a moot point we don't care about those right now so we're going to tape this because we don't what happens with uv resin when you cure it a lot of times it can warp a little bit so it can get, you know, it can slightly warp and kind of not stay flat. So this is why it's important that we tape this on all sides so that if it wants to warp, it'll be, it'll stay down and stay flat and you'll have less warping. You'll always get a slight bit of warping. Like none of these wings are perfectly straight if you, if you were to really examine them. Um, they're, they're, they've got a slight, they you can probably see it, just a slight little bend. And then depending on how much resin you put on one thing, like this has even a little bit more of a bend, but when you're wearing them as earrings, you don't notice that. Um, so it just depends on, you know, how big something is, how much resin you're putting on it. So there, that's good enough. So th for the first step, what we need to do is, and we also want to leave space. You know how, notice how there's space around the wings? They're not, I didn't tape right up to the wings because we're going to overlap the wings a little bit, not overlap, but overfill kind of with resin. We're going to go around it and then we're going to go off the wing a little bit and go around it. Kind of like as if we were coloring in the wing and we're sloppy and we got like a, a area around it. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see. And you can watch her video too. There might be, th there's going to be things in that she does that I don't do. Um, I do it slightly different than she does. I can't zoom you in too crazy much because I wind up with, um, I wind up going off camera. So for the first step, you're going to mix your soft and your hard resin. This is the only time in this process that you're gonna use the soft resin. Any other time you see me doing anything with resin throughout these wings after this first initial layer will be with just the hard resin. I will not be using this anymore after this. So we use it to a two to one ratio. So we mix two parts hard resin to one part 
of the soft resin. So that means if I put five drops of soft resin, I'm gonna put 10 drops of this. If I put three drops of soft resin, I'm gonna put six drops of this. So you just put double whatever the soft resin is. Now she shows you in her video, I think she does eight drops of the hard and four drops of the soft, and that does one wing. And I think she, you know, does it like that. So we'll follow her instructions. Um, so I'm going to count four. This is the soft resin. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then it'll be eight drops of this. So it'll be one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. And actually, sorry, she uses this for both wings, I think. It's been a while since I watched the video, so I'll forget pretty easily, but um, you might've seen me make these during a live stream a couple of times. That's when I was practicing and kind of getting it, getting the hang of it before I did a video on it because sometimes it's just easier. So this that I'm mixing this in is just a little silicone mold. So if you have something, a little cup or something is fine, like a little, um, one of those, uh, like those medicine cups or like a little shot cup, you know, jello shot cup or a medicine cup, that's fine too. I like these little molds because they're little and they hold just enough for these little things. And you can stick them in there and when you're done and any, you know, leftover resin will harden and you can just peel it out pretty much. So a few things about um, UV resin. UV is like UV rays from a sun. So that's why this resin can also be hardened by putting it out in the sun. It takes a little longer, like 30 minutes or so, but it is possible if you live in a very sunny place. Uh, most of us don't live in that sunny of a place or even if we do we run the risk of things landing in our resin like leaves and bugs and bits so it's it is it's a bit better to do it with a uv um a uv light or you know uv nail thing these are about 30 bucks you can find them cheaper on amazon too but this one's a good one it's about 30 bucks i'm going to put a link to it in the description i'm going to put a link to the soft and hard resin also um, I'm going to put a link to everything that you would need pretty much to do this project. And it's fairly easy. You just need to take your time and understand that sometimes things don't go as planned and sometimes you got to do something over because every now and again when I transfer the image and go to pull the stuff off, it doesn't work out and I have to redo it. And that's okay. Expect that to happen because if you expect that to happen when it doesn't happen, you'll be like, oh, it worked. Because it happens at least one out of every, like, four times that I do it, it seems. And it might just be because of maybe, I don't know. I really don't know because it, it I don't know. I don't know. It just happens that way. All right, so I've got this well mixed up. Now, it's UV resin, which means it only can cure with UV light, whether it's sunlight or the UV lamp. So sitting here, this is never going to cure. It's just going to sit here and it's going to stay liquid. Now, what you don't want to do is mix this right in front of your UV lamp. Now, I have mine covered with a piece of cardboard in the front, but you don't want to have this open like this while you're working on your resin right here because I guarantee you that light will get to it and it will start to harden. So you want to always have this turned away from you and maybe have like a piece of cardboard in front of it to kind of block off the opening because typically it's used for nails so people put their hands in it. So if you have a piece of chipboard or cardboard that you could put in front of it and just keep your resins away from the light. That's until you're ready to have it, you know, do what it needs to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little, little spoon thing. You can use a toothpick or like a little whatever you have. And I'm going to spoon little globs, little drops of UV resin. I'll do like three on this side and then just, it's just equal amounts. I'm just going to try to do equal amounts on each side and then I'll spread it around. 
Now I've got enough. We'll do another one over here. And another one over here. This side doesn't have as much as that side, it seems. Well, we still have a little bit in there, so we'll start working with this. And what I'm basically going to do is start taking the, the back end of this and just kind of go and spread it out. And what you want to do, and she'll, her video will be a little bit better on this part, only because I have a hard time getting too close up without going off camera. So I don't want to go too close. But you're just going to spread it out. And you want an even, you know, medium coat. You want it to be somewhat thick, but not so thick that it's crazy. But you do want it to be a little bit on the thick side because if it's too thin, your image will not transfer properly. And like I said, you want to hang, you want some hangover. So you want to go around. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to get cut. But for now, we want it to hang over just by a little bit, just by a hair, like a 1 16th or no more than like a 1 8th little hair of, you know, just a little give. So I'll show you the one on the right is what we're looking at. And you can kind of see if it, I don't know if it'll focus. You can kind of see how it's, this thing don't like to focus very well. You can kind of see where it's hanging over all the way around. Not that it will, sorry about the constant in and out focus. It don't like to focus very well. So I'm going to spread this one around the same. And they're going to touch a little bit, and that's okay. Like the resin's going to touch between them, but that's all right, because I'll be cutting them apart when I get to that part. So I'm just carefully going around and spreading out the resin. Okay. Wiping that off a little bit because I'm going to reel this in slightly. Okay. And I've got this flat, little tiny flat head, and I'm just going to kind of scrape back any hangover. Just, you just use little tools for little projects. And another thing is, what you don't want to do is use UV resin on large projects because I try. I had a large mold, uh, like a flat mold. It was like supposed to be a, like a journal cover, and this is what happened to it because UV resin has a tendency to curl up as it sets. So the more you use and the more larger it is, the more you're going to get it, it's going to curl. So I keep this around to show as an example of don't do things like this because it's too big and it never can really stay settled. <laughs> um, the next thing you'll need is a lighter or if you have a heat gun, you can use your heat gun. If you have a low setting, you can use it, just heat it up a little bit and then just go over it like I'll show you. Just let it get hot and then go over the resin and you'll see the bubbles pop. You'll see the bubbles pop and that's what you want. So once the bubbles are popped, and now you can see there's no bubbles. It's nice and clear if it'll focus. It's not really going to focus, but... And once you do that, and it's all, bubbles are all popped, and it's ready to go, you turn on your UV oven, and I'm going to stick this in and let it cure. So, that'll have to cure for a few minutes, and while that's curing, usually, you know, if, I'm sure, um, I, I basically would leave it in there and then go on to the next pair of earrings that I'm going to make, or my next thing. So I would start by cutting out and putting it on a tile and then putting the resin on. And by the time I get that ready, that one will be done and then I could switch them. So I kind of have like a little assembly line going on. But what we'll do right now is right now we'll mix up the glitter mixture. Now, again, I am only using hard resin now. We're done with the soft resin. We won't need that. So the glitter mixture, you can, you know, basically do it however you want to do it um, when it comes time for it. I have this like clear glitter stuff. Any glitter you have will work. 
I also have a holographic glitter, which I haven't done a holographic glitter on these wings. So I'm going to do a holographic glitter since the last ones I did, I did with the clear glitter. And I want to do the holographic glitter, which is going to be more solid but it'll look really pretty. So I'm just going to guesstimate how much. So if I used um, eight, 12, if I used 12 drops in here of between the soft and hard resin to cover it initially, I just needed probably about 10 drops or so um, because I won't, I won't need, I don't think as thick of a coverage with this, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so there's that. And now um, what you do is you just mix in glitter to your liking. You can mix in a lot, you can mix in a little, it really doesn't matter. It's just kind of up to you as long as it's still, you know, as long as you can still mix it, it'll, you know, it'll work. So I, I'm going to try that much to start. I'm going to mix it and just slowly mix it so I don't make a mess here. And if you think you put too much glitter, just add some more resin, some of the clear let resin so that you can, you know, get it going, which I may have added too much glitter. I don't know yet. Oh no, maybe not. I just couldn't get it mixing. I had to get it started. But yeah, I usually leave it in there like three or four minutes. You can leave it in, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes. It ain't gonna matter once it's cured, it's cured. As far as I know, you know, I've never had any issues leaving it in there for a while, so that's fine. Just You just don't want it to, you know, come out and not be done. And you'll know it's not done because if you feel it and it's real tacky, um, then it's not done yet because UV resin will, you know, it won't be real tacky when you take it out of the oven. It'll be just hard and solid and smooth. All right, so that's done. I'm going to keep that right there, ready for it to be put on. We'll give this a check. And what I usually sometimes will do is take uh, like something like a, uh, you know, like a, a pokey tool or something and just kind of tap on it. And if, you hear, if it sounds hard, it typically is hard, as long as it don't feel sticky, which, I'm going to leave it in for just another minute. It's not really sticky, but I'm just going to let that sit for just another minute. So if you don't have a heat gun, you can also use a lighter and just go over, you know, like when I was showing you how you get the air bubbles out, you could just go over it with a lighter or if you have one of these creme brulee torches, you can use it and just go over it quickly. You don't want to sit it on there for too long. You just want to go zoop, 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 and get all the air bubbles out. Um, it'll You'll see the air bubbles will pretty much just pop and disappear right before your eyes. So it's pretty easy. Now when I do this, I have this one too, which has also got sticky tape on it. I have two different tiles. All right, that should be good. All right. So... I'm going to take the tape off and it's nice to use a tile rather than chipboard even though you know you can use chipboard because you can keep reusing your tape because you know you want to use some sort of painters tape masking tape um, but you can reuse it if you're using a tile whereas the chipboard a lot some of the chipboard is going to come up onto your tape and it's not going to be usable again 
So if you're going to do several pairs, it might be better to use some painter's tape and, and a tile of some sort. Make sure your tile will fit in your oven. It can stick out a little bit, um, but just make sure it at least fits in there, you know, so that you have the majority of it in there. So here is our wings on the plastic still. So now, because this is the uh, soft and hard resin together, I'm going to take scissors and I'm going to cut around the wings. I'm not going to fussy cut them yet. That's the difference with her, how she did it. She kind of fussy cuts them while they're in this stage. And um, I'm also going to cut between them right here. She kind of fussy cuts them like this, but I found that it's better, I found it better to be, to like really fussy cut them after you take the transfer paper off completely. So I am going to cut right along and on some of that resin, but I'm not going to like necessarily fussy cut it. I'm just going to cut around the, the, the actual, you can see there's still, the resin is still around it on this outside edge where I cut, you can still see that, that it's overlapped. It's like over the actual image, but I'm still cutting it a little bit just to make sure that it's. And so what you do after that, once you have that cut, you just be very careful not to snap it in half because it's, it is resin still, but just kind of work it a little bit because what, what you're going to do now is loosen. Now she, when she does hers, she says, you know, go and, and it'll snap. Mine does that sometimes. And if you're not careful, it can still pop, crack the actual resin. Sometimes it'll snap, but not actually break. And that's what hers does. And mine doesn't really do that a lot of times. Sometimes it will. Um, it might just be because maybe I, my resin's a little different, but as long as I just bend it very carefully without over bending it and cracking it and just kind of loosen it, I can usually get it to come off pretty easily. And then you're just going to, once you do that a little bit, you're just going to take your fingernail or whatever and get underneath of there. And then what I'm going to do is pull off the transparency and hope that the ink stays on the resin and not on the transparency, which is what we want because sometimes it doesn't work out the way you want it to and that did so here's a blank transparency it's in my hand you see a little little bit of black ink but that that doesn't matter because we're gonna go back over that anyway on the outside so but overall there's nothing on there because now the ink is here um and any of that black ink will put back on later so now you can continue to now like get fussy cut and I find it easier to fussy cut it after the transparency paper is off for some reason. Um, I don't know why it, it seems to work better when I do it after. Just be careful if it gets too thick and your scissors don't want to go through it, you could potentially crack the resin with your scissors, but just be just be careful if you, if you don't feel like you're if you feel like you're getting it's too thick and your scissors aren't going through it very well you can always take a nail file and just carefully kind of run it in one direction all the way around which i i would do anyway so see i'm getting off camera i don't mean to but it's hard to stay on camera so i'm just taking this is the nail file and i'm just going around the very edge to kind of uh clean it up a little bit just make it smooth don't worry about any cloudiness that would happen sometimes when you're doing this because you're going to fix that when you put your, your layers of resin on it. It ain't going to make a difference. So this way you can kind of file it and it pretty quickly will file away any excess that you maybe couldn't cut away, if that makes sense. So there's our, our wing. Now keep in mind that this is the ink side. This is where the transparency peeled off. So this ink right here is not covered with any resin. So it can scratch off. So be very careful of that. This side has the resin on it. Um, and this side does not. So the next thing we're going to do is put the resin on this side. Keep that in mind when we go to do that. I'll show you why. Because we want to get that resin that is bare that we pulled the transparency off of. We want to make sure it gets sealed so that it is protected so it can't get scratched. 
So here's the other one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut around it. Oh, I'm really off camera. Dang. I'm trying to stay over this white area so you can see what I'm doing because if you're over here, you can't really see. So I'm doing the best I can. So I'm just going to kind of cut around it. Like I am cutting some of that resin around it, but I'm just staying further away from the actual like colors of the wing for the time being. Okay, throw that away. And now this is the, this is the, that's the resin side up. Oh no, I don't have it off the thing yet, duh. So, duh, but yeah, I'm just gonna lightly bend in areas just to kind of help it without cracking it. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to push the limits. Now it's a little thin on this side. So I'm hoping that doesn't cause me an issue when I go to peel this off. Sometimes if it's too thin, like the layer of resin, it'll, it won't, the, the, the color will not adhere, which this seems to be okay. Yeah, this one's good. Okay. So this is the side with the ink. That's the side with the resin. So we have, you want, you want the resin or the ink side up. The, the, the transparency was pulled off. And so that's the raw ink that's from the printer that transferred onto it. So that's that. I don't know why I keep doing this and it ain't moving over any. I apologize, my camera kind of sucks. Big butt, <laughs> big butt sucking camera. There, that might be a little better until it starts to shift. So now the resin side that's under on the bottom, we're gonna put that down on this sticky paper. Actually, no, I gotta cut this one. Oops, almost forgot to cut it. I didn't cut fussy cut around this one at all. Now I could fussy cut it or I can file it depending on what I'm doing. See now if this was the hard resin and I didn't have any soft resin mixed in, this would not cut very well. It would crack and you would see little cracks in it and it would likely cause problems. That's why another reason why it's important to use the soft and the hard resin for this only for this first section, this first step I mean. After this you don't have to do that. So now I'm going to just kind of, don't do this part over this because you'll get your shavings on there and then nothing will stick. I've done it like twice. <laughs> Bye. Oopsie. And you don't want to do the top because you don't want to scratch off your ink. So you're just going straight along the, hello, along the perimeter just to kind of soften your sharp edges a little bit, you know, make it all nice and smooth. And you don't want to use the most coarse file you have, maybe uh, like a medium to a, a light coarseness. Now we're going to have some filings. You're going to want to clean those up so they don't get in your resin and in your stuff. I'm dump them in the garbage here. And dry this off. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is because the outside black lines on one of them kind of got eaten off, and even if it didn't, this is this actually works out pretty well. She does it with like ink, um, actual like inking it with a dauber and some black archival ink or something. But I found that using a Sharpie kind of works really well. So um, it doesn't matter which side you do it on. But just go over and kind of just like Basically, kind of almost trace, except, you know, you're not going straight up and down. You're going at a slight angle, and you're basically going to act like you're tracing the wing. And what? see what it does? It gives you a nice, I don't know if you can see that. It gives you a nice, oops, black edge right there. And so that kind of defines the wings. 
And so I'm going to do that all the way around both wings. This way you get a nice defined, you can see the difference between the two. You see how that one's nice and defined and that one isn't. Now you don't have to do this. This is completely optional. You can decide you don't like it and not do it, but it does help everything kind of show up a little better on the wings. Whoops. Okay. That's a Sharpie, but as long as I scrub it hard, it'll come off my thing. And I've got alcohol too if I needed it. Okay. So, like I said before, we're going to put the resin side down. So, you're going to figure out which is the res resin side, and that's the side that's going to go down because you don't want to put the raw ink that we haven't sealed yet. You don't want to put that on the sticky tape. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt to figure out. If you look at it from the side, you can <clears throat> kind of see where the bowed kind of resin is, which is on that side. So I'm going to make sure that is very securely down. <clears throat> I don't know why my throat gets so dry when I do stuff like this. Now, <clears throat> Dang it. Dang it. Okay, so now you're going to take your glitter resin that we mixed up before. And this may or may not be a little bit on the opaque side, so I don't know how that's going to look, but we're going to hope for the best. <laughs> and you're just going to make a layer of the sparkle uh, resin over top, kind of like you did before. But we're only putting it on one side because this will be seen from the other side. So it's going to look very opaque on this side. It's when we flip it over that, you know, we'll see the color and then the, hopefully the sparkle won't take over the color too much. We're, we're going to see this will be like experimental, but you want to make sure that the resin goes all the way to the very edge of your, of your wing without going over, but like literally you need to really push it to that edge. It's very important that you do that. And, um, this way you get a nice even coverage. So you just want to kind of push it. It'll almost look like it's about to go over, but you just want to make sure you can use a toothpick. You don't want to brush it on. Um, if you, there are brushes you can use, like they, they sell like the nail brushes you can use, but unless you're experienced with it, I wouldn't just because you don't want it to get so thin that you leave brush marks. Um, you want it to be more even and you definitely don't want it thin enough that it could potentially leave you some brush marks because those brush marks will show up. So you just want to take your time with this part because it's definitely something you want to make sure you're getting all the edges very close to the, the edge. Now it'll dome at what they call doming, which is kind of like, you know, it, it'll, it, it won't ever like leak off onto the edge unless you like really dump a crap load on, but you can pretty much load it and it's not going to just, you know, go, Oh, it looks like it's going to go over the edge. It's not, it won't go over the edge like that. Now, obviously if you put like an entire cup of it on there, it, yeah, it will, but in this case, typically it'll just kind of sit like a, like have a, like a suspension on the top of it. And that's what gives it its nice, um, kind of domed appearance a little bit. I hope I didn't put too much on this one. But you basically want to really pull it to the edge without making it thinned out. So there should be a nice, like, there should be a nice, like, like, wad of it as you're going towards the edge. So that you can really pull it close to that edge without it. So that it stays, you know, nice and even all the way. It's, it's easy to do. It just takes a little bit of practice. So don't get frustrated if you do it once and it doesn't come out the way you like it. 
you just gotta you know you gotta take your time it's not something that's gonna happen I'm gonna take a little bit of that and transfer it over here because I have a little bit too much on this side and it will kind of self level out as well Sometimes if you pick it up and look at it from a side view, you can see and turn it, you can see where the heaviest amounts of the stuff is. And I probably pulled too much off of there because now I need more. And you can go in and add more because you kind of want them to be as even as possible. But I mean, as long as it's covered really well, it if it's a little bit if it's a little bit uneven, it's fine. Um, because this is the back of the earring and it's not going to be that big of a deal. You just want it to be edge to edge. You know, that's the, that's the bigger issue. So I'm just kind of looking all around and I'm holding it up kind of eye level, which is why it looks like I'm holding it weird, but, and I got a little over here I want to put on this one, but it's just, I'm trying to just get as even as I can of a of a, a layer. Now you don't want to go off of your tape, like or off of your wing. You don't want to end up with a big spill. Um, and if you were to end up with some sort of a spill, you would take um if you have a flat, let's say a spatula like this, like a metal edge spatula, and just kind of carefully push it and, and scrape towards the wing so that, and lift, like scrape towards the wing and lift to get any excess off as much as possible. But do your best to be very careful and not to do it. So, you, you know, like just, you know, be cautious about what you're doing. Now, I'm going to turn it to the side so you can kind of see how it's kind of domed. You see how it's kind of raised. Now, again, before we put this in the oven, I'm going to use, actually I'm going to use my torch to make sure there's no air bubbles. Now, in this case, since there's glitter, I can't see if there's air bubbles. So I'm just going to have to, you know, not worry about it too much. There's so much glitter there, you never see the air bubble anyway, but I'm going to get rid of them by lighting this and just going like that, that'll be good enough. And then I'm going to put it into the oven and this will sit in there for a good, probably five minutes. And while it's doing that, I'll get another one and kind of start that a little bit. Maybe we'll um, do one of these butterflies. I had bad luck with the butterflies, these but Oh, you know what I want to do? No, you know what I did? I have, now that I just dropped them on the floor, I have moons that I have. I can't leave. There we go. I have a couple of moons and suns, and I even have poodles. These might be a little big for earrings, but I was thinking like, I was thinking of giving it a try to uh, maybe, like what I'll do is I'll cut I'll cut them like I'll cut the circles a little bit smaller so that they're that or you can make them independents too. They don't have to be like earrings. You can make them into whatever you want. They could be pendants, they could be, you know, whatever. You can make earring and pendants. So this is how I normally would do it. I'd have another one get, you know, ready to go by the time that's done, you know, I'd be on to the next, oh, the ink side up. Remember ink side up. So that this way, when I was finished, um, well, I don't need to cut excess off, it's fine. These will go right into the oven, you know, because I'll just leave them in there until I'm done covering these, you know, it makes it easier. But make sure that it's nice and flat. Um, you don't want it bowing. So you want to do one side and then you want to do the opposite side would be the best way to make sure it's pulled nice and tight so that you don't have like a lot of slack hanging over. So now I'll come to this side 
and I'll put the tape on there and kind of like pull it a little bit and make sure it's nice and tight. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to fold every little corner over it, just as long as it's sealed to the tile. But you do want to cover as much, you know, you want to get it completely sealed almost all the way around. If you have a little space, it's fine, but you don't want to leave any kind of big gaps because you don't want to give it any chance for it to kind of buckle at all. And if there's big gaps in it, you know, when you tape it, you're going to give it a chance to buckle, especially with like a large round flat surface. So, and then of course, leave space around your moon because you're going to put resin on, you know, on the outside. You're going to color outside the lines basically with the resin. So I still have a little bit of the soft and hard resin, but I'm going to add some more because probably one of these full will do one moon pretty much. So I'm going to do, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do six and then three since I already had some in there. Three of the soft because now we're back to the soft because we're starting a brand new one. And so we'll do uh, one, two, three. I'm running out of soft. I'm running out. And then we mix and take your time mixing because you want to make sure it's thoroughly mixed together. Don't worry about if you get air bubbles. Oh wait, I have a little bit of glitter on there. Luckily it didn't transfer out, but it's got stuck into my little spoon. And I don't want it to get all over. Okay. Um, I forget what I was just saying. I don't know, but you can always mix up more if this is not enough, which is not going to be enough for both, but I'll mix up more as I need it. So, you know, you could start off mixing up, you know, a smaller amount and then adding to it as you need to go. Just remember that this, you know, whenever you start doing that and if you have leftover in here and you're still making more things, you know, just leave this one aside as your soft and hard resin mix so that you don't then go back and mix your glitter into it. Not that it's not going to be that big of a deal if you end up, it'll have a little soft resin in there when you mix some hard in, you know, like mix your glitters and do all that. It's not going to be that big of a deal, but, you know, just to keep it even though, you'll be easier if you just make one little mixing thing, your hard and soft mix. Another one is your glitter mix. This way you don't have any mistakes or, you know, issues. Okay, so that's mixed pretty well. So now I'm gonna do what I did before and just start dumping it. I'm probably just gonna dump all of this on here because this is a pretty big moon. So I'm just gonna dump it all on here. And if I need to share it with the other one, if it ends up being too much, which I don't think it will, I can lift some off of there, but there's not a lot, so. Yeah, this is, might not even be enough for just this one moon. And like I said, I'm probably going to cut into the moon a little bit. So if I go right to the edge of the moon, I'm fine with that because I'm probably going to, rather than waste resin, because I know that I'm going to cut these smaller. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to cut them out a bit smaller. So if they don't completely go over the edge, I'm not going to worry about it on these because... So I'm pretty much just going to go to the edge and let that be it with these because I am going to cut them a bit smaller anyway so or at least i'm going to try to without losing too much of the integrity of the picture if it goes over a little no big deal yeah, i'm probably going to have to add more but these are fun to make they're relaxing it's not hard it's just it's, I mean, it's a little bit of trial and error, like cutting out everything and kind of figuring out the layer of your resin so that it's not too thin and it's not too thick. You know, you, you just got to get used to it. I had success the first time I did it, but then I had a failure like the next time I did it. So it was like, okay, <laughs> you know, 
sometimes like with this oven, I like this oven because the curing oven, because it has an option for 60 seconds or 90 seconds, 120 seconds. And then if you put the button in the middle, it says 30 minutes. And that's what you want because there's nothing, a lot of the other UV resin or UV curing ovens, nail ovens, whatever they are, um, a lot of times they will only have a 90 second, 30 second, and one minute or 120 second setting, and that's it. And you have to keep hitting the button to reset it every 120 seconds, which is a pain in the ass, which is why I like this one, because it's got a 30 minute timer on it, and it's like easy peasy. <laughs> so I'm going to do um, six... Two, three, four, five, six. And then that means I'm going to do 12 hard resin on this one. If I can get it in there, hopefully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right. This way I have enough because I'm going to have to add some to that one anyway. So, ooh, that's full. Mix carefully. You want to make sure when you're mixing that you kind of go around the edge and you get, you know, you get the resin from the edge and bring it in. So you want to make sure it's well incorporated together. Every now and again, scrape off your little mixing stick pull in from the edges take your time with the mixing because you definitely it's not like two-part resin two-part resin you have to like mix for like three minutes and it has to be like a certain this i mean it doesn't have to be mixed that like you know for three minutes but you just want to make sure that your hard and your soft resin is incorporated together so that that it's even you know because you wouldn't want to have one section of it hard and the other section of it more soft and you know it's just it's better to take your take a few minutes, you know, like 30 seconds a minute to like really mix it so that you have a good combination of the two. And I'm having a hard time mixing because this thing is so dang full. Okay, so let me look at this and see. It needs yeah, it definitely needs a little more. Yeah, make sure you don't, like, it's better if you hold your resin cup over, because then if it spills, you don't want, like, big lines all over the place. I'm just going to start dumping this out. There's a really annoying bird outside my window. He's not like right outside the window, but I can hear him out there. It's being annoying. I love birds chirping, just not when they're making a really odd, annoying sound. <laughs> and I hear this bird all the time. And it's like, shut up, let the other birds sing. They're better at singing than you are. You just sound like you're going beep, 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 <laughs> making like weird noises weird ass birds okay I'm pretty much done here I think I'm just gonna check everything out give it a look-see make sure we got some even coverage Let's see, add a little bit more over here.
check this one. Sometimes it's hard to see where you need more resin. You just kind of got to play around till you figure it out. These moons used a lot of resin. They were kind of on the bigger side. Now, I'm going to torch it and then take the other ones out and put that one in. Make sure with this large of a space that there's not any air bubbles. There's one. There we go. Okay, so now I could pull this out. It's kind of like revolving doohickeys. Now, this I'm going to make sure is nice and done because seems it. Let me just wipe my hands off because the resin is like slimy. It's kind of like oily ish feeling on your skin. I don't like it. So, now to get it off the tape, sometimes if it's small enough, you could pull it off like this. And if your tape isn't like overly sticky, but other times, what you would do is take your palette knife and flip it under. Usually one of the edges is kind of sticking up a little bit because like I said, they do slightly, you know, slightly warp a little bit. And that's kind of, that's just the nature of the beast. You can't control it. So don't even bother trying. Um, it's just how it is. Um, I'm afraid to turn these over, but <gasps> ooh, they look pretty. Oh, I didn't think they were going to look that pretty. So that's the solid, you know, glitter side. But look, isn't that pretty? Whoa, holy prettiness. <gasps> They're so pretty. I haven't done these with the holographic uh, glitter. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now, that the lady in the video, she would do, I think she would do another coat of clear over the glitter, but I don't need to do that. And here's why I don't do that. I'm going to do another layer over the front, but I'm not going to do another layer on the back because I found that when I was doing them last night and I was making them thicker by doing that, by coating over the glitter, because sometimes the glitter can be like sort of rough on the back a little bit. But I found that if I did that and I thickened it too much, I got more bowing and I got less bowing, you know, less kind of bowing like this one I I didn't do a lot of and I didn't really get any bowing I made little parrots for a friend of mine so like I didn't really get any bowing because I didn't keep going over the back so this time now I'm just gonna put a la layer of clear over the top you know the opposite side so I'm gonna put the glitter side down on here like that and then I'm just going to put clear, the hard clear resin over top. I'm just going to pour some on there and spread it out and have a nice clean layer, which, you know, I like to sometimes take, since I have my fingerprints on here, a little damp baby wipe and just kind of go over it and then dry it with my rag, which it looks dirtier than it is. It's been washed. It's just stained. And I'll just kind of make sure there's no fingerprints. And then I'll put my cl final clear coat on while that is curing in there. And I'll spread it out like I did the other ones all the way edge to edge. Nice coat of clear. And you can kind of just eyeball how much you'll need. You'll get used to how much you'll use as you do it. So 
if at first you're you don't you don't feel comfortable dumping it right on there out of the bottle get yourself another little container not the one that you did the soft and the hard resin in and pour some of it in there and and do it like you did before and whatever's left you can put back in the bottle this is the soft hard mix you don't want to put this back in a bottle because there is no bottle to put it in because you don't have a bottle of soft hard resin so if you don't use it up you just put this whole thing there's a few drops in there put that in your thing let it set and then just peel it out so i'm going to take this and spread out this is my top layer it'll just make everything nice and really shiny because when you put the layer this layer was laying down on the tape before and so that can sometimes make it slightly dull a little bit while you're doing the glitter side you know so we don't care about the glitter side because that's not what's going to show this is the side that's going to show so we want to make sure this is perfectly shiny another thing that that woman on the thing also does is she goes around with a toothpick before she does this final layer, she goes around with a toothpick and does like the very outer edge. Like she'll hold it sideways and go around with a little bit of resin. I tried that. I found that it was more tedious than it was necessary. And you'll see. I mean, obviously she does a great job. Her videos are fantastic. Follow it to the letter. I'm not saying not to. But I just found if you want to skip a step, it really wasn't necessary and it really didn't do anything. And I think the main reason she had done that was like I said before, she used ink from an ink pad and and kind of like like as if you would ink the edges of a card or a piece of cardstock or ephemera. She picked up each wing and went around it with her dauber and inked it. And maybe that's why she ended up putting the resin around the edge the way she did because she was sealing in that ink. Well, you don't have to do that because we already did the Sharpie and it's not going to go anywhere. And we already got around the edge that the Sharpie was on just by doing the top because we kind of leaned the Sharpie in and it went around that edge like you'll see what I mean when you do yours you don't really need to do the, that edge I didn't find that it made I tried it on one it didn't make really any difference for what I was doing and it was just an extra step that kind of was annoying and I was having trouble with because if you don't do it right you'll end up with a like weird lip of resin and that was where I was having a problem which is why I decided you know what I don't need to do that because it was it wasn't necessary so i would just stick to doing it this way keeping it simple it does not make any difference or do it however you want you might find your own way of doing it it might be completely different than what i do or what the lady on that video does which i wish i knew her name but i don't let's see if that looks good but you know for all intents and purposes i don't feel that that layer on that very very edge like that is it's just not necessary if i thought it was necessary i would do it believe me but at least for my purposes it didn't make any difference in how the outcome of the piece was like it's they still look just as pretty and it had really no bearing on the on the outcome so but like i said you can do it however you want to do it you know i always feel like you know however i'm teaching you is not necessarily the way that you might find you want to do something you know and that's fine all right i'm going to switch these out now with something round like this, you'll see, you can almost see, I can see that it's bowing. It's weird and I don't know if it'll show, but you can almost see where it kind of like concaves in and the edges bow up, even on this, um, which like I said, it's fine because it, it, we're not gonna put so much, because the more layered resin you put on, the more it will bow. So we're not gonna be putting that much resin on it to make it bow that much. So it's really not a big deal. Let me make sure we're nice and solid. Because, you know, never know. Sometimes I lose track of time. I, I don't ever put a timer on. I really just kind of wing it. I'll just leave it sitting there while I'm doing stuff and then it's better than two-part resin because two-part resin is it's well i mean two-part resin definitely has its its perks 
because two-part resin you can do thick um thicker applications you could do thicker molds and do all kinds of fancy stuff whereas this you can't you got to stick to embellishments and jewelry that's basically the best way to look at it if you want to get into uv resin that's why this is perfect even though i made my own oven i made my own and i have a video that'll be coming out of showing you how to make your own but i will just let you know that it is not going to be cheaper than buying one but if you wanted to do several things in your oven at once, whereas this can hold a couple of things, my new one that I made can hold a lot more. So if I prepped a whole bunch of stuff and, you know, I just wanted to make my own um, to do other things, to be able to do add more than one thing at a time in, you know what I mean? Which that video will come out. I just haven't finished editing it yet. So as soon as I get around to that. I will do that and then I'll put that video out. But you don't need it. Don't think you have to make your own. It's not necessary unless you plan on doing high volume stuff all at one time, which obviously you could see how short of a time it takes to cure something. Not very long. So it's not necessarily the most necessary thing. But I just wanted to do it because I saw, you know, some some people do um do like make their own DIY ovens and I thought oh I wanted to give it a try all right so here's where I'm going to cut around it initially I'm not going to fussy cut right now I'm just going to cut it so that I can get it off I am making contact with the resin and cutting it I'm just not fussy cutting it I'm just kind of cutting around the edge and I think there's a reason to do that with having to do with it coming off of the having to do with the, the transparency. I don't know if you can peel it right off of the transparency. I should try that with one because she didn't never did that. She always cut the, around the resin. And so I don't know if you can really like actually cut, actually just take the, like in other words, can I take the transparency off of this directly? Just go, psh, not sure on that. I haven't tried it. I haven't been brave enough to try it. No, I'm bending it carefully. Again, I've got a thin edge, a little bit thinner. I can feel it. It's a little bit thinner over here. I'm hoping that doesn't ruin it because there's not a lot of ink on this moon. It's just like here and here. It's a moon, so most of it's clear. So I'm hoping it doesn't take too much of that little sparse ink that I have off because in thin areas, you tend to have where you'll the ink won't transfer very well. So I'm kind of hoping that I luck out and it will transfer just fine. I need to find the edge. And sometimes larger things like this is harder to transfer. Now, I'm wondering if it's because it's not cut very well. Now I got it. Ooh, this may not. Oh man, this ain't gonna work out. Dang it! And once it does, like, there's no way to like. Oh, can you burnish it down? Nope, it won't work. So it lifted up and it left a big spot right there, which sucks. So that one's kind of a moot point there. We'll give this one a try just for poops and gigs and then I'll make another one. That's why I always print out extras because this way if I have one that doesn't work, you know, I can always redo, you know, another one. It only takes a few seconds to put that on there. But for poops and giggles, I will try and see if this will work better for this one. And then later I'll do the other one. I'm just kind of carefully flexing it. This one might do the same. Because again, I think it was because it was too thin. And that was the problem. Because you don't want it too thin. You don't want it too thick. See, that just gave a little crack. It wasn't the resin that cracked. Sometimes it'll crack and it'll be the back of it that'll crack. It's just the stuff getting loose. So it's okay if you hear a crack as long as you don't see a crack.
tomorrow now. Come on now. There it is. All right, let's see. This one seems okay. See, that one's okay. That one came out nice. All right, for some reason, that just happens. It's just like a crapshoot. Sometimes they'll just go, nope, I ain't going to come out the way you want me to. So, pfft, on you. And it just happens. So now I'm going to try and straighten this out just a little bit. But I'm going to use the file. The file will sometimes, if you're not good at making a circle and making things look round, you know, if you start cutting something and you're like, oh boy, now it looks like a hot mess. If you use the file, it'll go a little bit better because it's a thin resin, so it's not going to take long to file it. Um, so sometimes you'll have better luck filing it. So I think I'll just make that into like a moon pendant or something for now. I'll make the earrings later because I need to, ultimately I'm going to take the file and sh make the moon smaller, but I had already printed them out before I you know, realized they were a little big. So I can just make those all as pendants and then make another batch and make the moons a little smaller. And that's the thing. You're going to have to put these. What I do is I put them into a Word document. If you've never seen my video on how I get graphic files and how I put them into a Word document, that's how I can put so many on one page and so that you're not wasting your transparency because that's the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to get your transparency and print one image on it and be like, okay, that was a waste, you know? So I'll put a link to that video that show that I have that'll show you how to get graphics, whether it's, you know, it'll, it'll show you how to get them off of like Google or whatever and look for images um, just in general, but then I'll also show you how it'll also show you how to put them into a word document resize them to what you want and So once you do that and you you know have it sized where you want it for the transparency Make sure you print off a copy onto a piece of copy paper just so you can check the size Because even though you might be pretty sure what the size is going to be when you're sizing it in word Print it out on just, just print out a copy, like a, you know, quick copy, just to look at the size because I thought these were going to be plenty fine and not too big, but they turned out being a little bit bigger than I wanted and I didn't do the copy paper thing, which I usually do, but I was kind of like rushing because I was getting ready for the live stream and I thought I was going to do these during the live stream and I didn't end up doing them, but so definitely you know just do a printout on a copy on a, you know because rather waste a piece of copy paper than waste an entire transfer paper you know, transparency i mean because you know the transparencies they're not that expensive but they're not that cheap either you know what i mean it's like 100 sheets is like 20 bucks almost so you know it's still you know you want to get the most out of it that's how i feel about it anyway All right, so I pretty much smoothed that out. So I'm going to, now I'm going to use the clear glitter on this rather than the, the, um, the holographic glitter so that because the holographic glitter, because there's so little color in here, the holographic glitter might kind of, and the holographic glitter has like a gray look to it already. It might not work well with this. So I'm going to just use this, even though there's a couple drops of my mix resin, it doesn't matter. Um, I need to find the side that is the ink side, which is which side here. turn this here and see okay so it's this side is the side I want down is it I'm having problems oh it's so hard to see I gotta hold it up by the light oh no that's right yeah Okay, so this is going to go this way. 
press it down real good and I'm just going to take some hard resin and dump it in there because it's not going to make that big of a difference with a drop of the soft hard resin mix. So I'm going to mix that in. I'm going to take some glitter. I'm going to use this glitter here. This way we can have a cool glitter moon. And again, like when it comes to mixing your glitter, there's no specific recipe. Just mix it in until you, you know, it's not going to not harden because you mix the glitter in. Oh, I put too much. It's not going to work. No, it'll work. Um, you might have a hard time mixing it. But, you know, don't, don't like get too worried about, you know, how much glitter you put in. Just put in what you want, what looks good to you, what makes you happy. That type of thing. I know I'm going to need a little bit more resin. Because the moon's kind of big. That means I'll put some more glitter in there too. I do want it quite glittery. I don't like to skimp on the glitter. But yeah, any glitter will do. Um, you could use microbeads, which with the earrings, I don't know if that's the best idea. Glitter, the fi a fine glitter is probably better. Like any, and you don't want to use like chunky glitter, I don't think. I mean, you can in certain applications, but to make these earrings, I would imagine well, I mean, I guess you could. It depends. Play around, you know. It's not going to hurt nothing. Play around with small things and, and practice a little bit and see what you like. That's all. I mean, that's the best I, advice I can give you is to just practice. You know, play with different glitter types and different, you know, whatevers. I was going to say that maybe the larger glitter wouldn't work, but for some applications where you have, like, I have a lot of clear space on here, I think that a larger glitter might look cool sometimes, you know. It just depends. You just got to play around. You'll see what works and what doesn't work for you, you know, as you're playing. But you're not going to do anything wrong. So don't like, oh no, you know, like just play. It's fine. You're not going to hurt nothing by playing around. You might waste a small, you know, a little bit of resin or, you know, or uh, one of the things you printed out. But I mean, that's going to happen anyway, because you're going to have things that happen like issues with, you know, transferring issues or what have you in some cases uh in her video the lady that i i learned this from the um uh out think outside the box or something thinking outside the box her video she shows you what happens if 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 you need if the ink um like on the moon there she could take you could sometimes take a uh i've done it before sometimes you could take like um an alcohol ink marker or something and kind of color an area if you have an area that the ink kind of lifted if it's a small area now that was kind of a big line area there was no way I was gonna be able to really fix that but if you end up you know with a like a, a really small area you can fix that with like a, a like a Copic marker or any kind of art alcohol ink marker probably would work the best but I I'm sure one of Pretty much any marker would work as long as you're covering with resin afterwards, obviously, which you are. So I think that is a doable, you know, thing. So if you make a little mistake, don't, you know, there's ways to fix certain things. I wasn't, I just wasn't going to fix a, a, that was quite a large mistake. So I was like, man, I, from experience, I've, I've tried to fix large mistakes before and they just didn't come out very well. So I just rather throw it away and start over than try to fuss with it and get frustrated. Because we all know I love to get frustrated by things. Things can be very frustrating. That little stuck in, little glitter and resin stuck in there, get out. Stuck in the spoon. So you make sure you get all the way to the edge. Mm 
I'm going to look at it and see. Sometimes it's easier to hold it up and look at it. But like I said, this, this, the glitter application doesn't have to be like the most perfectly even. I mean, even all the way to the edges, yes, but like if it's a little bit thinner on one side, as long as your glitter application is good, as long as you're happy with the coverage of glitter you got, it's not that big of a tragedy if, you know, it's a millimeter thinner on one side than it is the other because the top layer is going on the other side anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal. All right, so... All right, so now we're going to pull out our thingies because they are done. And look how beautiful they look. I'm going to throw that in. All right, and I need to wipe off my hands because they're kind of slimy. And now to make the earring parts of these, um, I would imagine most of you would know you'd have to put a hole in these. Uh, I have this little thing. If you have a Dremel or like a tiny drill bit or like one of those little hand things, it's great. I have a pain in the ass drill, hand drill thing. It's got a tiny, this one sucks. I'm sure there are better ones out there. It does the job, but it's really a pain in the ass to use. But what you do is you take a piece of like, you know, thick chipboard or something and you lay down your pieces, which by the way are gorgeous. And let's see, which side do I want the thing? Okay. Okay. And then you make sure you don't do it too close to the edge so that you crack your resin. So you just want to go in, you know, like an eighth of an inch or so. And this thing, you put your hand on top and then you spin it from the other side. So you do like a spinning motion with your fingers and you press down at the same time. And this little top thing spins, but the problem is this thing kind of falls apart when I do it, but I don't know. So it only takes a few seconds, but don't try to punch a hole in these because you will crack it and you will be pissed because you will destroy it. <laughs> Yeah, so don't don't do that. Make sure you have some form of drill way to put your hole in. You can buy these little drills. I don't know what they're called though, so I might not be that much of a help when it comes to that because I really don't know what they're called. Hand drill, uh, palm drill. I'm giving you idea. If I could find it on Amazon, I'll list one below. So if you see one down there, that means I found it. So this one falls apart constantly. It's very annoying. Now, there we go. Dump that little bits coming out of there. And so once you have your hole in there, like so, in the top, now all you need to do is put your earring little doodads, which I have down here. You're going to need two jump rings for each one so that they sit with the this part facing forward on your ears. So I use a uh, a small jump ring and then a even smaller one because th if you just use one jump ring and then your earring wire, it's going to they're going to sit sideways on your ears. So if you want them to sit facing forward, you're going to want to use two jump rings. Now it could be any size you want, but I'm going to use uh, two medium, I guess, and two tiny, um, jump rings because I'll do one on each and then your earring wire, but you can do it whatever size jump ring you have. It doesn't really matter as long as you have two jump rings and your earring wire and a trick to, I'll show you a little trick to putting on an earring wire properly so that the earring will face the right way. Let me just, uh, get this part first. So I take the bigger jump ring first and I open that up and I put that on here. And then I take the tiny jump ring and loop it on before I close the bigger one. This way it's already kind of on there for me. 
And I'll do that on the other one just to get that out of the way. And I just dropped the damn thing on the floor. Oopsie poopsie. Is it where I can reach it or do I have to get another? Where'd you go, little sucker? Wherever did you go? Of course it disappeared. All right, let me get a different one because I dropped it. Of course I did. Why, of course I did. Okay. Ooh, I'm hot now. Okay, so I'm going to stick my little one on here. It doesn't matter when you do it. Just get it on there around the same time that you do your wing. Okay. Come on, don't be ornery. Yeah, so that woman, when I was saying how she does the resin on the side, she goes along the very, 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 very little edge with a toothpick and a tiny bit of resin. And when, every time I did it, it left like a weird lip and I was just having, it was just not worth it. It doesn't, it, it doesn't need to happen. I don't feel it needs to happen. Okay, so now I'm going to open the tiny jump ring that is connected to the larger one and put my earring wire on. And the trick here is when you go to put your earring wire on, the, the hump on your earring wire, right, this lump part, you're going to want it facing towards you with the front of the earring facing towards you. Because if you do that, then when the earring goes in your ear, it'll always face forward. It won't be facing some weird wonky backwards. So the hump of the earring goes towards you when you hook it into the little jump ring. And the front of the earring will go towards you. So both the front and the hump will face you. So in other words, um, hopefully, I don't. if that make, doesn't make sense, then pff, I apologize. But if you play with it a little bit, you'll know what I mean. And if you've ever done earrings or anything, you'll definitely know what I mean. So I'm going to open this teeny tiny jump ring. Now the earring is facing me. It's facing the glitter. The part that I want facing forward ultimately right now is facing me. I'm looking at it. So that means my earring wire is going to go with the, let's see if I could do this right, with the hump facing me as well, the little humpy part. And I'm going to hook that onto the teeny tiny jump ring right here. I'm gonna hook that right onto it so that it will be now facing, everything's facing the right way. Then I let it drop, then I close the jump ring and everything will be good and fine and dandy. Because it, this way now, when it's in my ear, it will be facing out, you know, towards people so that it's not like this. And then you're like, crap, it's on backwards. Because that's not the part you want to see. I mean, as pretty as that is, you want to see the wing, the rainbow color. So just a little tip, if it made any sense at all. I just always face everything towards me, the hump and the, and the front of the earring. See, like right now it's backwards. I have the wrong side facing me. That's fine, too. If the wrong side is facing you, then you face the hump the opposite way, too. And that'll solve that problem. So you don't have to have it facing you. You have to turn everything around just turn the earring wire around and hook it on. Just, you know, whichever way the front is, that's where the hump of the earring goes on to the jump ring, kind of. And this way, it will always face forward because when you put it in your ear, this is the part that is like towards the front of your ear because this goes through your whole of your ear and that is in the front. So anyway, there's our earrings. How gorgeous are they? Beautiful. So we have our earrings. Now let's check on our moon. All right, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna try to pull this off without wrecking it. Now we can turn it over. I've got a little spot there I have to fix. Ooh, look at that. Look at that damn moon. Isn't that cool? I love that. So like that came out really nice. It's a little warped, but not too bad. It'll make a nice pendant. That's really cool. And I am, before I go on to the next step, I'm going to blacken around the edge a little bit, I think. Or I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should leave it like that. 
but I'm not going to do this the rest of this. You know the deal. I'm going to put the sparkly side now down and I'm going to put another layer over. So basically that's it. And then I'm going to put a hole in it and put a pendant and there you go. And I can either put the black around the edge or not. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But anyway, so that's, it's easy to do. I hope you guys will give it a try and have some fun with it. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and check the link, the description for links. Um, because any links that I find or have, don't forget to check out uh, Thinking Outside the Box video. Please give her a subscription while you're there um, because she is the one that I got, I, you know, found out how to do this from. I don't know if anybody else had done it before her or if she's the first one to do it, but either way, she deserves the credit because she did a beautiful job on the wings. I have the same wings that she did. Um, which I had actually bought a long time ago from that same person. So it was funny that when I saw the video, I was like, oh, I have those wings. And I think it was the screenshot. I was like, oh, I recognize those butterflies that she had in the screenshot or the thumbnail of her video. And I, it like was familiar to me. And I have the butterflies, I believe, too. But I had these as well. And she did these. And I was like, oh, I was like, I, I, I've, I have those wings. I was like, I know I have those wings. And I looked for them. And I did have them. So... Yeah, but it doesn't have to be these wings. You can find something else off the internet. You might have a graphic of your own already. So yeah, just have a good time with it. And I hope you will give my video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you um, would like to join our Pink Poodle Pack Creative Crafty Playground, which is a Facebook group where we share our art and all kinds of things, you can do so. There's also a link for that below. There's a link to my Patreon below. Um, I hold auctions every two weeks so that you can, um, I have all different things I'll have for sale. I have fabric for sale, sometimes handmade things. I'm going to have some of these earrings for sale at my auction, which is this Sunday. So today is Monday. So coming up Sunday, I'll have an auction. So I'll have things like these earrings and whatnot. So check those out or come check that out if you can. It's usually about 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, on Sunday and I do them every two weeks so and everybody I hope is staying safe from the coronavirus and staying inside and making sure that you are not going anywhere unless you have to so that hopefully this virus can get out of our lives and we can move on and go back to life <laughs> have a good day everybody uh, make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people bye